Let us pray. Father, we are praying that you will prove yourself alive this morning in Jesus' name. We are asking that your word will reach us where we are. Bless us in a mighty way. Lead us to solutions to our problems. In Jesus' name we pray. We praise the Lord because of the way he has been leading us. We've been studying the Bible and marriage for the past six weeks. And today we want to talk to couples especially. And of course it's going to help those who are still preparing for marriage. The title of the subject of today is What Couples Should Know. And two main things we want to point your attention to. The meaning of partnership. Then the methods of problem solving. Marriage is a partnership and it takes two people in the grace of God to be able to make marriage work. To be married, you know, is a wonderful experience. That is, if we have the grace of God to go through that marriage. If we don't, we soon discover that there are problems in marriage. These problems may weaken or destroy us and the marriage. Uh, do you know that in God's love and wisdom in his grace and his power we can make these problems to strengthen the marriage bond that's why I want you to stay with me as I go through this uh, meaning of partnership and the methods of problem solving Whenever two people are supposed to do something together, each must play his part to make it work. And since marriage is partnership, we should be determined to give the best to the marriage. That means the wife is willing to give the most in, the, in meeting the needs of the husband to make the marriage work. And the husband also is willing to give his very best to make the marriage work. When we get married, selfishness should go out of our lives. In Romans chapter 15, verses 2 and 3, let every one of us Please his neighbor for his good to edification. That means it is the full-time job of the wife to please the husband and the full-time job of the husband to please the wife. When you become self-centered and demanding and being concerned, you are not considerate, then there cannot be uh, you know any type of uh, marriage uh, happiness do you know what we are told about Jesus Christ verse 3 for he even Christ peace not himself but as it is written the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 33. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 33. 
But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Shugon, eni to gbe ya wo, ama she, to jo unti she ti aye, biyo ti she le wun ayare. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. Verse 34. The married woman careth for the things of the Lord, how she may be holy in body and in spirit. Notice what follows in verse 34. She that is married careth for the things of the world how she may please her husband sugbon eni ti agbe ni iyawo a ma tojo ohun ti se ti aye bi o ti se le wu oko re see in our culture we have uh, some problems ni no asha wa ni isuro kan we feel that the husband is you know on top and the woman is um, below a le ro pe oko lo wa loke ti iyawo si wa ni sai the husband is superior and the woman is inferior oko lo je oju lowo ti iyawo si je aru so many times the husband is asking the woman to contribute the best into the marriage while he's willing to do nothing ni tori na oko igba ni oko a ma fe ki iyawo ki o ma sai pa re ni 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 igbe iyawo won ti mo ti oko ko ni the Bible puts the husband as the head. Well, that means the wife is put as the body. And the husband is liking to Christ. And the wife is liking to the church. So the head um, signifies the husband and the body signifies the wife. So doesn't that automatically show that the wife is inferior? Because you know, since the husband is the head, what else are we looking for? The brain is in the head, but the heart is in the body. Which one would you rather choose? Have a head without a heart, or have a heart without a head? No, it's partnership. The head and the heart are both important. The brain is in the head, the affection is in the heart. And so that means they are equally important. And that means we must fulfill our roles together. And therefore, I'll be talking to you on what the husband ought to know and what the wife ought to know. Then I'll bring both of you together on how to solve your problems together. Let me first of all talk to the husband. So that while later I'm talking to the wife, you'll be busy thinking. You won't hear what I'm saying. In First Peter chapter three, this is wonderful for the husband. Verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife. If that had not been in your life before, underline it, giving honor unto the wife. As unto the weaker that is tender vessel. When we talk of weaker vessel, we are not talking of useless vessel, but tender. You know, in, uh, in your house, we have different types of plates. Different types of cups. That's a type of plate you allow the little children to use. They knock it on the ground, but there is no danger. And uh, you know, they bang it on the table, there is no danger. There is another type of plate you don't allow the children to talk. That's a weaker vessel because it's weaker, it's precious. It is tender. That's what the Bible is talking about the woman. It's not talking of the weaker vessel as being useless but as being precious. That when you live with that woman, you recognize this is just tender, precious, and wonderful. 
and has been heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Follow me, I want to point seven things to you. Number one, husbands, if you are there, tenderness. See, the husband must not show a strength that is physical, but his strength that is spiritual, his strength of character. Act in tenderness. And you do not demand from the wife what you are not willing to give out. Now it says to handle her as a weaker vessel, that means to avoid a domineering spirit. Let's move on. Let's move on. Number two. Common politeness to your wife. Any marriage will be successful if the wife and the husband will live together and they are polite to one another. When you meet a perfect stranger, somebody you have not met before, what do you do? You smile. I want to uh, entertain the person. I want to help the person. Why not just give the common politeness to give to strangers or to, also to your wife? Show consideration to her. Number three, sociability. And uh, what I mean there is that, you know, you are entertaining when you go to your company. You know, as a man, you get to the office and you greet everybody with cheerfulness. You're humorous and you make everybody happy outside. When you come in, bring that humor with you. Bring that cheerfulness with you. Bring the happiness with you. Bring the entertainment at uh, home with you. Companionship at home is very important. Number four is understanding. If you are living with a woman, you ought to have understanding. Our temperaments change. Our feelings change. Now she has peculiarities that are just unique with her. You ought to know by now, as a married man, that uh, women pass through some cycles in their lives. And you know there are times when she just moves doesn't like to talk to anybody. It's not because there's anything wrong with her spiritually or even uh, morally, but physically something may be wrong. And so you understand your wife's temperaments and peculiarities. And you become observant and patient and understanding. Let me read that verse to you again. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel tender vessel and has been heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Remember what? Tenderness. My tender at home. Two, common politeness. Am I polite to this woman? Three, sociability. Am I cheerful, humorous, happy and entertaining at home? Four, understanding. Now I understand her. She goes through different cycles in her life, and then I become patient and understanding with her. Number five. Let me go get your attention before I say this. So just uh, pens up and pens down and look at me here. 
you need to write it down fairness in financial matters fairness proper in financial matters you know sometimes uh, we think the women have magic of multiplying money i mean the man knows that something should cost uh, 30 naira and then he puts his hand in the bucket and brings out 10 naira and say so you go and perform the magic and multiply it if you don't want your wife to get into black magic, bring out 30 naira. If we give out a little amount of money and we're expecting too much from the wife, that is not fear. And you see, we go to the houses of other people and we complain. We say, you look at so and so, the marriage is better. Look at so and so, the children are better. Well, so and so brings out more money. So please, uh, you know, be fair in financial matters. Number six, I said this last week. I'm going to say it again. Private correction and public commendation. Never, never rebuke your wife openly, publicly. Now, when you want to correct, do it in privacy. Don't do it before your children. You don't want your children to disrespect their mother. Don't do it before your junior brothers and sisters living with you. You don't want them to disrespect your wife. Don't do it before your own parents. You don't want your parents going about saying that your wife is bad. Before you correct your wife, before you say anything, make sure that only two of you are together. And then public commendation. Never talk about your wife in a negative way outside. Your parents ask you. How is your wife? She's just number one in my life. Never mind, we just, uh, you know, finished uh, correcting something before we came out. But when we come out, she's just the queen of Nigeria. You know, you, you lock the you lock the door and you know you come in and you tell my wife this is not right. This is not good. And then after you finish that, you come out and then you see your children. Have you greeted mommy this morning? Wonderful mommy. Now I'm sure you appreciate this as your mother. Private correction. Public commendation. You know after you have corrected yourselves privately in the room. Then some people knock at the door. These are friends. And you already know they come in. Now they say, Mike, what's the problem? Is this a foolish woman? Never, never. No, no problem at all. Everything is at the cross of Jesus Christ. And my wife is just, you know, we just love one another every day. Remember that. Public commendation. Private correction. Number seven. Honesty, truthfulness, and straightforwardness. Don't be deceitful or diplomat diplomatic. If a wife cannot trust the husband, she will find it difficult to love. A woman needs to feel secure in her husband's soul. Show honor. Show courtesy. Show thoughtfulness for your wife. Under all conditions. And under every conceivable circumstance. Now come with me to uh, Ephesians chapter 
five. I just want to point to you there five different things. Ephesians chapter five. Look at verse twenty-three. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. That's the first time you are told in that chapter that the wife husband relationship is the church Christ relationship. Verse 24. Therefore, the, as the church is subject unto Christ. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. That's the second time we are told the husband-wife relationship is likened to the Christ church relationship. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for it. That's the third time we are told that the Christ church relationship is similar to the husband wife relationship. Verse 28 and 29. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. See that loveth his wife, loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. That's the first time we are told the care of the us the care of the husband for the wife must be the care of Christ for the church. Verses 31 and 32. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Verse 33. Five times in this short passage we are told the Christ church relationship should be the husband wife relationship. How did Christ love the church? How is the husband to love the wife? Five ways. This is number one. Christ loved the church realistically. His love was never diminished. His love was never withheld because of anything in the church. That means because of anything in your wife, your love will not be diminished. The church has times of ups and downs. The wife also has times of ups and downs. And yet the husband as well as Christ will keep on loving the church whatever the condition of the wife. Number two, Christ loved the church sacrificially. How costly is the love of Jesus Christ? He gave everything to love the church. How sacrificially is the love of the husband for the wife? The husband must be willing to give up everything to love the wife. Give up interest. Give up your time. Give up your pleasure. Even give your friends. Giving up your friends to be able to love your wife more. You think about it. Do we ever sacrifice our interest? Hobby or ordinary game to be able to love the wife. 
Have you given 30 minutes a day, one hour a day to love your wife? You come from the place of work. Your wife has been all alone. And then coming home, you just, you know, undress and you put on new clothes, you take your baths, you eat, and off you go again. Well, you say I need relaxation because I've been busy since morning. And you're going to give some time to your wife. Give up some pleasures to love your wife. And of your friends to love your wife even give us some part of your ambition to love your wife let's move on number Christ loved the church purposefully we're told the Lord the church that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word your love for your wife must have a purpose. A purpose that is not selfish. A purpose that is going to do good unto that wife. Number four, willfully. You must love that wife willfully. That's how Christ loved the church. Have you ever realized there was no motivating cause in the church for the for Christ to love the church? All the motivation of loving the church came from within Christ. He willed to love. He determined to love. He purposed to love. Where there is a will to love, there will be the affection and the feeling to love. Your love for your wife must be a willing love. You must determine and purposefully love your wife. You must tell yourself many times, I have no alternative. This is my wife. I must love her. Now this will shock you. I pray you never get out of this shock. You you know, Jesus Christ loved the church absolutely. What does that mean? He loved the church without limit. Without condition. Without reservation. Write it down. Your love for your wife must be absolute. Without limit. Don't anybody don't let anybody make you feel ashamed you are loving your wife. Uh -uh. Are she giving you anything to drink? Uh -uh. Of course you drink water from her. Of course, all that fanta, all the things to drink. Of course, she's giving you something to drink. You love her so much, I see giving you something to eat. She gives me things to eat every day. In the morning, afternoon, and evening. And I've eaten so much from my hand, I just can't do any other thing but to love her. Without limit, without condition, without reservation. I'm praying you'll be able to love your wife that way. You say men if you are following me. Uh, okay. Or are you afraid of what I'm saying? So then, we must love sacrificially. We must love purposefully. We must love realistically. We must love willfully. We must love absolutely. Now, women, let's pay attention. You know, women generally feel that uh, they want to be needed or wanted or understood. If the husband doesn't understand, 
then or doesn't understand the wife uh, you know she's not happy eh mo pe awon obirin won ji awon to je pe won fe pe ki awon eyan ki o ma fe won ki o ma pa omo ra ni gbagbo se ti okan won ko ba si loye won won eh won she feels lonely and empty when the husband is not giving attention nigba ti oko re ko ba be si ma eh koju si lati ma ba soro eh yo ma da be ni pe oni kan lo da wa be ni pe ko se ko si abani ke do fun this makes most women to be demanding ele mu ki opolopo obirin ki o sa ma fe and critical when their needs for love and affection are not met ki won se ma pa juro nigba ti a to ba ba e ni ati fe won pade the wife should be understanding rather than demanding o ye ki iyawo ki o loye ju pe ki o sa ma bere sha because of our time i will not be able to read all the passages so just put it down nitori akoko wa ko ni le ka gbogbo awon awon se we mo sa ma ko sile first peter chapter 3 verses 1 to 6 peteru ki ni ori keta lati ese ki ni de ikefa and then ephesians chapter 5 efeso ri ka mu verses 24 to 22 to 24 and verse 33 at ese keta le let me read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33 yet in ka efeso ri ka ran ese keta le logun nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband sugbon ki olukuluku yin ki o fe ran aya re be gege bi ohun ti kara re ki aya ki o si beru oko re As a wife, you need a radical change. If you really want to be loved, you must make yourself lovable. Eh, gaga bi aya bi oba bi oba feri pe ki ki o confirm re iwo pe lo ni lo yi pada logan ni tori na obod of ni fe. Learn the real meaning of love. Iwo ko itu my fe. Don't let a day go by without loving your husband. Ma se je ki ojo kan fu oda lai fe ran ko re. You know, no husband in this auditorium in this church has ever received enough love. Ko si oko kan ninu gba you know i don't know any wife here can say you know i love my husband so much it's not too much for him eh ko si aya kan to ti le wi pe mo fera oko mi to be ke to je pe ku poju fun o be lowo oko re nigba to ba dele did you hear what he said when he was preaching in jo gbo nkan ti won wi nigba to won wa su he said that uh, you have not got abundance of love that what you have is just a little is yes. that right one no mi e pon re e won ni to ni won ba die ni so that have been showing the love have been showing you that is just a little percentage of the love you need pe gbogbo e fe ti mo tin fi han lati ojo e won ba die ni ninu ele to ni lo your husband will tell you it's like that man came into my heart to tell you what is inside my heart eh o ko But you see, love is not just um, smiling and grinning. Love is patience. Love is tolerating the failures of your husband. If you are not a father, you cannot call it. Love is meeting the needs of your husband in every way possible. If you are not a father, you cannot call it. Love is meeting the needs of your husband in every way possible. If you are not a father, you cannot call it. Love is meeting the needs of your husband. Love is avoiding criticism at home. If any iya go fun bibo enu atelu ni ninu ile. Love does not demand it gives. If e ma bere o ma fun ni ni. I'm going to give you an assignment. Mo fo ni se kan lati se. No since you married have you ever tried deliberately to discover the needs of your husband? Lati gba to ti se gbe yawo nje o ti mo mo fi gba kan. Why I ni oko re ri? Your husband is unique. Oko re ni kan ni. His needs are unique. Awon e ni re da duro gele. You will never meet another man like that man you are living together with. O ko ni ba iru okunrin ti o nba gbe ipade mo. His needs and preferences are different. Awon e ni re o yato gede gede. His failures and weaknesses are different. Awon e kuku na ti ja kule re yato. His virtues and strengths are different. Iwa ti pa ati ipa re yato. Discover your husband's um, personal unique characteristics e wo mo e iya to gede gede ati wa oko re and loving ki o si fe ran re number 3 eketa abandon all dependency upon your own parents e wo ja gbe gbogbo gbe keli awon obi re ti sapa kan and abandon all criticism of his own parents ki o si fi gbogbo e ibenu atelu awon obi re ti apa kan never criticize his parents e wo ma se ibenu atelu awon obi re He may sometimes uh, show resentment against his own parents. Ni eh ni igba miran o nle fe lati ma fi ikusi ni han ti awon obi re. But your attitude should be that of tolerance every time. Igba iwa re o nle lati ma je le to ni ifarada ni gbagbo. Number 4. Ekerin 
Listen to me. Now you know sometimes when your husband is away, the children are bad and troublesome. Even the sink is very dirty and the water will not flow. And uh, before your husband came back, they brought Nepal bills. Daddy has finished that home. And in fact, the landlord came and said, Where's your husband? As your husband is coming from the office. What's the first thing you say? <laughs> you know today things are bad. That man is never happy. He is in trouble in the place of war. The moment he steps on the doorstep of the house was the first thing problem. Reserve that uh, comment you want to pass. Reserve that thing you want to say until after full. Otherwise, you say so much that your husband has no appetite anymore. Give praise and appreciation. Remove all the jealousy. Where have you been since morning? Remove all that. Don't greet him with problem. Greet him with a smile. Don't tell him of the problems the moment he steps in at the door. Number five, let wives please forget the ministry of changing their husbands in one day. You can't do it. You attack, you attack your husband. You want to change your husband. It's only God that can change your husband. Don't attempt to do it yourself. Just rejoice with him. Be patient with him. Tolerate all his problems. Don't criticize him. Don't attempt to control him. Don't complain and condemn. Now, with all this, I want to point your attention to, spot, to some problems. Although our time is gone, but let me point to you seven areas of problems. One, infidelity in the home. The infidelity, the man or the woman may now say that I don't want any religion. Number two, idolatry. May want to worship idol and even want to motivate you to worship idol. The problem in your home may be infirmities, sicknesses, diseases. And another problem may be immorality. If the man is living in um, evil and sin with other women. Another one may be the problem of in laws that's so common. It may be the problem of insecurity at home. Or it may be that of impotence. Now, we cannot exhaust um, solving problems one by one. But if I was to pick all these problems one by one, number one, the, you know, solve the problem of infidelity and then go to number two, idolatry, it may take time. But you'll need patience. You'll need prayer. And you'll need to hold on to God. You'll need to stand on the word of God. Live as the Lord wants you to live. And then depend upon God to solve those problems. Now I want to quickly go through what I call the ABC of solving problems. Now I'm doing it this way so as to help you remember them. A, if you announce, announce the problems and they explode on you. 
have served them and then they remain permanent. Attack your partner instead of attacking your problem and the house is destroyed. Be blame others for your problems and the problems will never be solved. Well, you say, what do I do if I'm not going to blame others? Do I bury the problems? You bury them and they will grow. You know the natural tendency in human beings is to blame other people for their problems. But you know that is not right. Let's move on. See, create a free atmosphere to solve your problems. Create a free atmosphere to discuss. And then solutions will be near time. But you know if you are angry and he is angry and you know you are both angry and you are not creating a wonderful free atmosphere how can you solve the problem? D, you defend the, defend the problem so defend yourself while discussing and your problems will increase and multiply he examine your problems and examine yourself and your problems will decrease and diminish you know the bible doesn't allow the husband to examine the wife or the wife examining the husband but you see you examine that problem and you examine yourself what have I contributed to the problem and while you examine yourself and you remove your contributions to that problem then you solve that problem F face problems squarely and you are in a position to handle them when you face the problems you are throwing away self pity you are facing the issue with maturity when you are wrong you are able to say you are bold enough to say I'm sorry I'm wrong now G I want you to remember that uh, you know there is bad fighting there is good fighting and good fighting is a fight of faith now good fighting must be fought under official rules you say the husbands and wife fight of course they fight listen to me there is bad fighting there is good fighting bad fighting is when they take cutlasses and begin to cut one another bad fighting is when they break all the windows in the house when they puncture the tires of the, of the vehicle that's bad but bad, good fighting is the fighting we fight under good rules and if you don't know rules for fighting never fight you say are there rules for fighting let me give you the rules you like to fight let me give you the rules number one before you begin the fighting you must both agree that the time is right and proper let's do it now let's do it later I mean when you call your wife you say wife we are going to fight but you tell me when is the time when are we going to do it it's a coward that will come from behind somebody's back and not the person at the back that's a coward I mean if you want to fight sit down and say my wife come it's time we, we must fight out well, now you tell me when you are ready and we'll start number two we must determine our aim in fighting now what's your aim in fighting you want to kill her 
Or you want to kill him? Do you want to destroy the children? Do you want to burn the bed? Determine your aim and write it down in this fighting. I just want to destroy everything in the house so we don't have bed to sleep at night. No, you don't want to do that. Number two for your fighting. The rule is our aim and only aim is deeper understanding so we can fight to deeply understand one another. Now as we are fighting rule number three, what weapon are we, are we using? We must determine that. Let's check our weapons so that we are sure they are not carnal or they are spiritual. Now number four, the rule we are following when we are fighting is that we lower our voices. Remember our fighting must be private. And if we talk too loud, it becomes public. That brings me to the next point. We must choose the place of fighting. Now you don't come to the fellowship center, I come on the platform and begin to drag one another on the platform. Now you know what I'm talking about as fighting. So that husband, you don't go home and say, okay, they said we can fight, now let's fight. What I mean is you are discussing together. To solve a problem. And number six. After discussing that problem, we must pray before we pass. We must love before we pass. We must forgive each other before we pass. So, G is good fighting, and good fighting is a fight of faith. H Hostility is the result of sleeping daily with accumulated problems. A problem last month, you didn't solve it, you slept. Problem last year, you didn't solve it, you slept. Problem last week, you didn't solve it, you slept on it. Problem yesterday, you didn't solve it, you slept on it. The result will be hostility. Malice. So make a habit of solving your problems every day. I identify the problems. No when there is a problem, don't just say there is a problem. Identify them. Be specific. Put your hands on the real problem. Then you'll be able to solve and settle it. J is the next word and it stands for jealousy. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. It will affect your attitude. Call us the situation negatively. If you have jealousy to your problem, the result will be rage and anger, cruelty and malice. K kneel down in prayer. If you want to knock the problem out of your life, you must kneel before God in prayer. Otherwise, you see the stain will remain on your heart. Okay, after settling the problem, if you kneel in prayer, Christ will wash away the stain from your heart. Otherwise, your heart will be remain will remain poisoned and polluted and you will not be free to love after the problem is settled. Well, learned by the problems you have gone through. And meditate on the positive qualities of your partner rather than on the problems you have been suffering. Don't magnify your problems beyond the actual size.
And if you neglect the problems, they have a chance of binding and enslaving you without your permission or without your recognition. Oh, open the problems to one another and there is possibility of conquering them. Be prayer, patience and perseverance will always overcome problems. Q quietness is the quality you must manifest while your partner is talking about the problem. I'll recognize that Satan has interest and investment in the problems if you are not careful, so be watchful. Uh, study the problems under pressure without the promises of God and you'll find that you'll never be able to come out of it. Don't act under pressure. Breathe well. Don't just tell yourself this is not the end of the marriage. It's just a problem along the way. See, you take the problems away from between you, otherwise they'll form a barrier, a wall that will stand between you. You understand your partner. Always put a positive construction on your partner. Ask yourself, why does she do what she does? And you know the problems will automatically go if you do that. V, you vacate the house whenever there is a problem and you know the problem will be waiting for you sitting on your chair before you come. Don't be afraid. It's a car that will vacate the house whenever there is a problem. When you do that, the whole house is full of the problem before you come back. Be a man. Be in charge. Be in control. Now double you if you worry about problems, they double their poisonous effects on you. X is a crossroads. Formed by two lines not facing the same direction. Crossroads will occur in your life when you refuse to face the same direction with your husband or wife. Why yesterday's problems can, can spoil the promises of today? Yesterday's problems can spoil the privileges and the pleasures of today. Now see if you neglect the possibilities of today. So don't concentrate on yesterday. Concentrate on your privileges today. Z bring, zealously bring your tongue under control while thinking through all the problem. I told you how to solve your problems. Now I'm telling you what Jesus said this is him in John chapter 13 verse 17 if ye know these things happy are ye if ye do them be a yin ba mo in kan won Johanna ori keta lase keta ni ogun be a yin ba mo kan won yi you know already we have the solution in our hand we have the promises of God we have the word of God we have you know the, all these teachings that were been given and if we really are willing to solve our problems there is no excuse anymore we know the way and we know the solution I believe God will give us the grace you have any problem? Remember the promises of God. You have any problem? Remember the solution of the Bible. You have any problem? Remember the message of this day. And you don't have to be ruined by your problems. God will bring us out of our problems. Rise up and let us pray. Don't 
let your problems conquer you. Conquer those problems. Don't blame others for your problems. Face your problems squarely and solve it. And if you have been going the wrong way, fighting a bad fight with your husband, stop it from today. Don't fight with weapons that are deadly or disruptive. Let your weapons be spiritual, not carnal, not deadly. What's a man go? Certainly a problem with your husband. Is it to destroy your wife or husband? It should not be. Give yourself wholly to the Lord. And the Lord will help you. Husband, remember your uh, responsibilities. Wife, remember your functions as well. And the grace of God will be sufficient for every one of us.